Hello friends and welcome back to the channel on the TAE and the Abrams. Okay, in the last video, check it out if you haven't seen it. We have the models in this state. They are pretty good actually as they are, quite acceptable. And I've called this video advanced weathering. Does that mean you need to be an advanced mother? No, not at all. Just a series of techniques that pushes them to that next level. So uh, let's crack on with this. Okay, so we set the tone with that filter, and we've got some streaks, we've got the basics there, but let's push the contrast now. I'm going to use oil paints. Okay, I'm showing you here, Abtai Long, Engine Grease. Uh, it just is a tone that I really like. It's that uh, blacky brown mixture, really nice shade component, and we're actually only going to use a single shade of oil paint. Of course, make up your own mix, make up what's appropriate for the model you're building, but in this case, I'm using this very, very dark brown oil paint. And what we're going to do is create a series of mini washes, localized washes. We're going to apply it in different concentrations, and that's done by simply applying the oil into a palette it and then having a small quantity of thinner be it enamel be it white spirit be it whatever you use they all work the same way so don't worry too much about that now as we apply this wash we're going to concentrate it into certain areas create shapes create variations in the pattern you're actually your eye is going to be a little bit deceived because it's going to create artificial shades and patterns on the model now we're going to work in areas of detail and emphasis so look at your model Obviously, if you're doing Abrams, you may want to copy this example, but on different models, different features will wish to be highlighted and darkened using this technique. Now, also, one point to bear in mind here is that in the first step, we just simply applied a wash. It was very easy. Now, on this step, we need to sort of go back and forth quite a bit, and we use a series of different tools for that. Again, nothing really complex, believe me. But as you can see, I apply wash, and then the main sort of action here is stippling. Stippling is pushing the oils with a brush. It's not drawing them, it's not creating streaks, but you're pushing the oils into patterns and in the position that you want them to be. Now, when they're in a liquid state, so you've used quite a bit of thinner, you may want to mop up the excess wash. There's a couple of ways to do that, as I'm demonstrating. One, of course, is to use just simply a cloth or a piece of tissue, or you may well use one of these makeup pads, and again, a cotton swab or a cotton bud or a Q-tip, whatever you call them, come in very handy during this step. So as we go forward, we, we, we're applying washes, we're moving them around, we're taking them off, and then we're going back into areas that we want to concentrate. So on the Abrams, as you can see, um, the effect's quite apparent because, of course, we've got that lighter tan base coat, and um, the effect is repeated on the upper turret as well. Looking at for areas of interest, concentrating the wash, taking it off, and you're building up the effect gradually. Okay, so why am I using oil paints for this technique and why am I using one color? One color because it's simple and really I'm creating contrast here. You could vary them up, but really this is simple and also the effect's going to be homogeneous. I, I use this word a lot, but basically we haven't got patches of color. We've got the overall look of weathering. Now with the oil paints as well, the first part, of course, we created these interesting contrasting darker shades within the model um, which your eye is drawn to the emphasis on shade is much more apparent to the viewer but also we can create other effects with these oil paints now we're having these little mini washes we can also do the speckle effect so let's go on the back deck create some oily stains on there and also in this scale um, we need to obviously create our weathering effects in scale now we can do our streaks etc but let's do some little micro um streaks or um what do you call them like oil streaks or dirt streaks that are in scale which is uh 
exactly the same technique we use on the larger armor, but um, obviously we need to keep this small. So we've got a very fine brush using very small quantities of oil paint, and we're just doing little flicks downwards and creating these uh, uh, nice little shades and patterns on those side skirts. This is the only area that you need them on, which is obviously on these uh, vertical surfaces. Okay, now we're on to the T80, exactly the same oil paint, same technique, but for some reason it's easier on the T80. Uh, the reason being, of course, we did the contrast with the light dust wash, and uh, with the darker green color, when we apply even this uh, very dark brown, it's a lot more subtle, the effect. So the blending's easier, and also the application's somewhat easier. So this takes maybe about a quarter of the time it did on the Abrams. With the Abrams, of course, um, if you've got areas that aren't blended correctly, it really does stick out. With this one, with a darker model, it's a lot easier. But we use exactly the same technique. Um, sort of randomize the application, the wash. Don't put in every single gap or else you'll wipe out the dust effect that you applied earlier. And then uh, we'll still do the same sort of stuff like splattering on the rear deck. And once we've done that, we can call that sort of wash part complete. Okay, let's just have a quick look at these models. Look at the contrast here. Look at the difference between them. Yes, you can vary the weathering on your models. Uh, I hope you appreciate that. And we're going to even further contrast that as we go on through this video. Yes, the year is 2020 and we're going to dry brush this model. Yes, the technique is alive and well in bear land. Well, it is for me, okay? So, um, basically, leave that model at least 12 hours prior to this technique. You needed the previous oils to dry. What we're going to do is take a light in contrast color, uh, in this case, um, a buff from Ammo of Mig, apply it to a palette, and it's all in the name, a dry brush. So we take the extra oil paint off this brush and use a flat brush. It just makes it a bit easier and uh, simply just start working all over the model. What you're gonna do is pop back the detail now. You've established a dark wash, so when you come back with this buff color, you're really gonna pop up the detail. Now we're not gonna do this Tony Greenland hyper stylistic dry brushing by using oils. We've got a very fine pigment, so the effect is somewhat subtle, but it works so nicely on these smaller models. And actually it works great on 35th scale models as well. So uh, it's simple technique. And as you're going to see, it, it really adds that extra level on here. And it's such an easy thing to do. Okay, so let's dry brush the T80. Use two greens. We're using starting off with this weed green from Ammo of MIG. We also go on to use the one from Windsor & Newton. Obviously, uh, with the green, we're going to use a light green. We're not going to use a buff on here. Well, actually, we do, but... Uh, I'll explain that later. Okay, with the uh, with the light green, dry brush technique repeated again, uh, being even more subtle. Um, you don't want this to wipe out the dust effect yet again. So we're going to pop some panels here. Also, we'll apply the oil paint neat. This is sort of like oil paint rendering type te te technique. On the turret, you can see there's some error blocks that I'm going to hit. We'll also hit some areas of those hatches and we'll create a further green tone amongst everything um, that we've already done. So it's a further contrast technique. And now, like I said, we will use the buff, but we use it very selectively and we use it as a dust instead of like a proper dry brush. So we hit the mantlet and we hit the front uh, mud guards and then uh, we can have a look at these models and see if we're happy with dry brushing in 2020. Okay, let's go on to some mud splatter effects on the Abrams first of all. 
and uh, we're using this ammo MIG product. It's an ammo based product. Um, okay. First thing to do is to make some masks up. The 72 scale models, if you get this stuff everywhere, it's gonna look pretty poor. Also, we're doing it very selectively. We're choosing the very rear quadrant of the fenders on the uh, Abrams and also the rear back deck. And we'll also sort of do a little bit of speckling underneath the hull. Now, the idea here is to start off with uh, a few different colors. So we'll start off with this thick mud, this turned earth color, which was the darkest. Now, what I found was, when I opened this up, it somewhat congealed. So I had to use enamel thinner to reactivate it. And it still wasn't really that satisfactory, as you can see. It ended up uh, either being too thick or too thin. But anyways, we persevered with it and we laid down that first layer. Now the uh, technique is extremely simple. Get a small brush, dip it inside the mix and use a toothpick or something similar to flick it on. Very similar to speckling. But of course, this um, product is has a texture to it. It, it builds up and uh, you'll actually see the effect of mud where it's applied. After we've done that dark mud, we're going to go on and use the lights. So we've got those other shades there. So let's supply them now. And also to note is that there's actually two types of effect here. Uh, inside the sets, you've got a thick mud and also the splatter effects the splatter effects are perfect they really do work quite nicely as you can see so what i've discovered about these products is that certainly this uh, the medium density mud the splashes mud is really excellent for this technique the heavy mud just didn't seem to work and i think it's because it's meant to be pushed into create heavy mud anyways um the effect is built up after a while. Uh, I went back, used dry earth, used a dry step, different shades. And you can see those different, it, it looks quite realistic and you've got depth and texture there. Now, um, the other thing that I think we have to bear in mind here is that I think we'll go on and use this technique in the future, but I'll show you how we can make this um, mod mixture ourselves. And we can customize the mix. Okay, so T80, no splattered mud, no texture. Something different again. We're going to use AK's Dust and Dirt Deposits. Uh, I really like this product. It's uh, enamel-based, again, with pigments within a enamel mixture. And um, the effects are pretty awesome. So we use Patafix and paper and lay down these masks. The next stage is a quick layer of hairspray and we'll just hit again beneath that uh, masked off area. Okay, now my favoured method of application of these d dust and dirt deposits is airbrush. I just find it uh, easier to apply. Uh, if you use a brush, um, which you can do, of course, you can create different effects and we'll go on to that. But um, by doing this, we get a very nice thin layer and we'll apply all three colors so we'll start off with the brown and we'll build up to that yellow and then the light dust so we'll get all these different contrasts underneath the hairspray um it, the uh dust deposits dry very quickly being an enamel based product and obviously i think you know what's going to happen next we're going to use some chipping techniques Now with the Abrams, instead we're just going to use one colour. And we've got no hairspray on there, but we've used the masking technique that we used on T80. And again, we're going to create a very, very deliberate tide mark effect on the model, but without the hairspray technique. And I'm going to show you how easy that is to chip, even without using any water, any hairspray, which is quite interesting. Okay, so look at the Abrams now with its tide mark, one colour, and the T80, it's built up on three layers. Now, we'll start off with the T80, and we'll just chip it up using water and this stiff brush, the same way we always do all of our hairspray-type techniques. I'm going to draw it down and create this mud streaking. 
and it's quite straightforward and the effect is very pleasing so you can actually use your hairspray technique uh, some people think it's only for uh, rust chipping but it's excellent for this dirt weathering type effects and we're going to use this we're going to see this technique used on quite a few of my models as we go on and it looks pretty good on 35th where we've got a little bit more area to work with but the um, the overall build up is pretty good and we've got this nice contrasted layer at the bottom now let's have a look at the Abrams now. The Abrams, remember, we didn't use any hairspray whatsoever. But um, using a stiff brush, we can just simply scratch off the enamel. The enamel is um, a little bit, uh, it just, because of the pigments, they don't bind properly. It's not exactly a paint. It doesn't bind into the layer beneath it. So you can just simply scratch it off, which is what we do here. But we've got a quite a, a different effects there. We've got one clear tide marked area and the other one the t80 is all broken up as if it's been wet mud and splashed down so uh, i hope you'll enjoy that contrast let's just uh, finish off these models uh, we're going to do some chipping and we're only going to do the abrams uh, that's all that we're going to do and i'm going to show you the most simple way to chip a braille scale model so here it is we're just going to use a pencil a mechanical pencil we're going to dot in a few areas and uh, just chip the model as, as you feel uh, you wish to, obviously. Um, uh, keep this um, subtle, keep it in contrast. Don't need to use a brush. Um, it looks uh, in scale as well when we use this pencil. And the other thing we'll do, we'll quickly just shade in the um, loader's machine gun uh, ring or whatever it's called. I don't know, but it's a metallic area on top of the turret. And uh, that's basically our weathering completed. Uh, the last thing to do is just make some aerials. Just a quick tip here, just use a hairbrush. That's all there is to it. So let's have a look at the finished result. Two models, T T80 and the M1A2 Abrams. Um, contrasting weathering techniques applied to both of them. Some differences, some variations. Hope you got something out of this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be doing something different again next week. So uh, stay tuned for that one and see you soon.